I have a question for you. Who won the iconic World Cups of 1954, 1974 and 1990? Right now I am pretty sure you are thinking, man that is too obvious. Germany, Germany and Germany. Can't you think of any more challenging questions? Yeah, okay, we all have the pictures in mind of the likes of Helmut Rahn, Franz Beckenbauer or Lothar Matthäus lifting the World Cup. But what if I told you that technically you are wrong to say that Germany won these three titles? Wait, why is that? Well, quite simply it is because Germany as such, as we know it today, did not exist in any of those three years. Instead, the state or nation who actually lifted these three World Cups was West Germany. Wait, there was a West Germany back then? Does that mean that there was also an East Germany? Bingo, because from 1949 all the way up until 1990, Germany was actually split into two separate states. The blue part here is West Germany, the nation, if you will, that won the World Cups 1955, 1974 and 1990, while the red part was East Germany. So one country was split into two separate nations that are anything but friends with each other. We only have this weird situation in Korea nowadays, but Germany actually had this as well for 41 years. Yeah, German history is pretty complicated. And if I'm gonna tell you that this yellow point within East Germany is actually Berlin that was itself split into West and East Berlin, it doesn't really make things easier to understand. Well, this is not a history channel here of course, but I'm still gonna give you some historical background just so you have some context of what we're talking about. So after the end of World War II up until 1990, the so-called Cold War era, we had West Germany on the one side and East Germany on the other side. Although the people were more or less the same, I mean they were all Germans, these were two completely separate states who couldn't be any more different. For context, West Germany was basically what Germany is today. It was a typical western style country of capitalism, freedom, democracy and the economy after the war was pretty much reviving itself and it was more or less even booming. It was controlled and strongly supported by the western allies, the United States, the United Kingdom and France. Whilst East Germany was basically the complete opposite of that. It was a typical Eastern Bloc communist country and even though the officials back in the day would have never admitted it, but it was more or less a dictatorship. Even though East Germany was technically called the German Democratic Republic, it was nothing else but a puppet state of the Soviet Union. And so democracy was not a thing there, people were not free, the economy was suffering and most of the population were rather poor and very unhappy. So just looking at this little comparison, it becomes very clear how different the two Germanys were and where life was better in West Germany. That is also why during these 41 years, thousands of East Germans tried to escape from the East to the Free West. But actually achieving that was rather hard, because the East German government put up crazy borderlines and relentlessly shot down everyone who tried to escape the country. The most famous of those fortifications was probably the Berlin Wall, where a lot of people lost their lives trying to escape from East to West Berlin. Well, I could go on to talk about this super interesting topic for hours, but after all, this is a football channel and we want to talk about the beautiful game. So after this quick history lesson, just keep in mind that West and East Germany basically represented the two superpowers during the Cold War era, the West and the East, and the border between these two worlds basically went through Germany. The political tensions between the two were huge, the nations couldn't have been any more different, but after all, it was still the same German people living in both of these countries. I mean, they were all Germans. So they also had a lot of stuff in common, and one of these things was their love for the beautiful game, their love for football. When we talk about German football history, we always talk about the historical success of West Germany, but East Germany actually produced some real quality players as well. And I am pretty sure that you know some of them very well. You might just not be aware of the fact that they come from East Germany. So without further ado, let's get to the 7 best East German football players of all time, from oldest to youngest. The first player on our list is Jürgen Sparwasser. Of course I'm talking about the guy on the right in the picture, in the blue jersey, because I'm pretty sure you know the lad on the left as well, also known as a certain Kaiser, but he's a West German. Unlike Jürgen Sparwasser. One of the first East German football stars, Jürgen Sparwasser was born in 1948 and he played football as a professional from 1966 to 1979 as a one-club man for East German side Magdeburg. Sparwasser was a flexible striker who could play on either side of the pitch. And he had a really interesting career and life. First of all, he was part of the Magdeburg team that won the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup in 1974. This huge success was the only time in history that an East German side won a European title. Sparwasser was one of the most prolific East German strikers with 111 Oberliga goals to his name. The Oberliga was the East German top division, so that is the equivalent of West Germany's Bundesliga. 
but the biggest moment in Jürgen Sparwasser's career came in 1974 when he scored the winning goal against West Germany in the World Cup 1974 in Hamburg. Yep, in the World Cup 1974, East and West Germany actually faced each other in the group stages. That was the only competitive game in history between the two German nations. And East Germany obviously went into this game as huge underdogs. Most of their players weren't even professionals. While the West German team was one of the best in the world, it consisted of stars like Franz Beckenbauer and Gerd Müller, and they also went on to win the World Cup later. But still, East Germany managed to defy all the odds and beat big favorites West Germany in that group stage game with a winner of Jürgen Sparwasser. This match was politically super important as the communist East German government used it as some kind of propaganda for their state being the better Germany. Well, Jürgen Sparwasser made it possible. And also interesting to note that he was always an opponent of the communist system in his country. His family got into trouble with the government and they actually managed to escape to the West in 1988, only two years before the state would break down and reunification would come. So that was Jürgen Sparwasser for you, one of the two big East German stars who ended their careers before reunification. And now we're getting to the biggest one. Joachim Streich. Well, I'm pretty sure you've never heard of him, but he is definitely worth talking about. What a player. Joachim Streich was born in 1951, a bit younger than Sparwasser, and he played from 1969 to 1985. He was a classic center forward as they were typical in the 70s and 80s and he scored his goals for Hansa Rostock and later on also for Magdeburg alongside Sparwasser. And I think it's fair to say that even though Joachim Streich didn't have those single big moments like Sparwasser, he was all in all a better player. Streich holds several unbreakable records in East Germany. With 229 Oberliga goals, he's the all-time top scorer of the league. And he has 53 goals in 98 caps for the East German national team. Both of these numbers are records. Keep in mind that the East German national team was never really good, so 53 goals in 98 caps is actually a great number. It was due to those records and also his playing style, including spatial awareness and agility, that Joachim Streich was nicknamed Gerd Müller of the East. So I think it's fair to say that he was the best East German player of the 70s and 80s. But now after those two classic icons, we are actually getting to players who are East German, they are from East Germany, but they have also played in the reunified Germany. And the first of those and number three of seven players today is Ulf Kirsten. I'm not quite sure if you have heard of this guy, but he was definitely a baller. So who was Ulf Kirsten? Born in 1965, his career lasted from 1983 to 2003, 20 years of which the first seven were played in the East German League at East German side Dynamo Dresden from 83 to reunification 1990. And after reunification, Ulf Kirsten immediately moved to the West where he joined Bayer Leverkusen, the club that he would play for for the next 13 years as a pure striker. So what did he achieve? Well, it is fair to say that Ulf Kirsten was by far the best East German player at the time when reunification occurred in 1990. In the last ever East German Oberliga season, he had just been voted the best player in the league. And due to the big quality gap between East German and West German football, only a handful of East German players seamlessly adapted to the Bundesliga after reunification 1990. But we can definitely say that Ulf Kirsten was one of them. He became an undisputed star and a serial goalscorer at Leverkusen, managing to score 181 Bundesliga goals over the next 13 years. This means he's still number 7 in the all-time Bundesliga top scorer list. Just imagine how many goals he could have scored had he played in the Bundesliga over over his whole career. He was part of a great but unlucky Leverkusen side. They finished runners-up many times and reached a lot of finals including the 2002 Champions League final. But their only big title remains one DFB Pokal in the 1990s. Nevertheless, Ulf Kirsten always delivered. And the fact that he has 100 caps for both German national teams, 49 for East Germany and 51 for the reunified Germany, shows how well he adapted. Well, Ulf Kirsten was damn good, but the next player on this list was even better and I'm pretty sure you know this guy. Number 4 on our list is Matthias Sammer. Do you remember this man? If not, I'm gonna refresh your memory right now. Matthias Sammer was born in 1967 in East Germany and he had a rather short career from 1985 to 1998. Before 1990, he played alongside Ulf Kirsten for East German side Dynamo Dresden. And then right after reunification, he joined VfB Stuttgart before moving to Italy to play just a few games for Inter. But his biggest success came when he moved back to Germany to play five years for Borussia Dortmund. Sammer started off as a winger and midfielder back in East Germany, but mostly later he played as a defensive midfielder and even as a sweeper. 
He won almost all big titles in his career except for a World Cup. He won the Euro 1996 and the Champions League, several Bundesliga titles and several Oberliga titles. And despite only playing for 13 years, he also collected a considerable combined 74 caps for both German national teams. His biggest ever achievement came in 1996 when he surprisingly won the Ballon d'Or after lifting the Euro with Germany and the Bundesliga with Dortmund. So Matthias Sammer is also the only East German player in history to ever win the Ballon d'Or. Despite having to retire early at only 31 due to an infection, he remains one of the biggest East German legends of all time. And some of you might also know Sammer's name from his work as a manager and official for clubs like Bayern, Dortmund and the German national team. Now that was Matthias Sammer, 4 players done, 3 to go. Number 5 on our list is Bernd Schneider. Not that random bald lad on the left, Bernd Schneider is actually the guy on the right in the red Leverkusen jersey. Well, I'm not sure how many of you guys know Bernd Schneider, but he was born in 1973 and only started his professional career one year after reunification in 1991 and ended his career in 2009. His East German club is Karl Zeiss Jena, where he played for 7 years as a professional before moving to Leverkusen in 1999, where he also ended his career. He played 10 years for Leverkusen and that is where where he really became a star. Bernd Schneider was a versatile offensive midfielder who could play in the center of the pitch just as on the right flank and on the left flank. Let's start with the bad things. Bernd Schneider never won a trophy in his whole career. He also belonged to the Leverkusen side who lost the Champions League final 2002 against Real Madrid just like Ulf Kirsten. But nevertheless he was a great player who also got 81 caps for Germany. Schneider was definitely capable of scoring goals from midfield, but his focus laid on assisting and making key passes into the final third. Being one of the finest creators of the early 2000s, his great technique and ball control gave him the nickname the White Brazilian. Well, ironically, the White Brazilian lost the World Cup final 2002 to Brazil. Yeah, Ben Schneider was pretty unlucky, but nevertheless a great player. And the guy who we are talking about next was even more unlucky than Ben Schneider. Can you guess who it is? Obviously, the one and only Michael Ballack, also known as one of the unluckiest players of all time. But let's start in the beginning. Michael Ballack was born in 1976, so he was also too young to play professional football in East Germany. He started his career in 1995 and ended it in 2012. His East German academy team was Chemnitz and his most notable clubs in his professional career include Kaiserslautern, Leverkusen, Bayern and of course Chelsea. Ballack is known as one of the most complete central midfielders of the early 2000s. And let's not act like he never won any silverware. He won 5 league titles and 7 domestic cups in England and Germany. But nevertheless, damn, was this lad unlucky. Just like Ulf Kirsten and Bernd Schneider, he was part of the Leverkusen side 2002. Leverkusen really seemed to like these East Germans. Anyway, that Leverkusen side was on track to win the treble. They were first in the Bundesliga, they were in the DFB Pokal final and in the Champions League final. Well, after all, they bottled the Bundesliga to Dortmund, they lost the DFB Pokal final to Schalke and they lost the UCL final to Real Madrid. And in the summer, Balak was also part of the Germany team who lost the World Cup final to Brazil. And 2008 would actually be another very unlucky year for Balak. He lost another Champions League final with Chelsea against Manchester United on penalties and would later be Germany's captain in the Euro 2008 final defeat against Spain. Well, two years after Balak left Chelsea, they actually won the Champions League and a few years after he retired, his country actually won the World Cup. Anyway, despite being extremely unlucky, Balak was a class player. He captained and led Germany for years and later he was also named into the FIFA 100 by Pelé himself, which includes the 125 best ever living football players in the world. So after all, despite missing out on big trophies, can we say that Balak deserves a shot for the best East German player ever? Well, to judge that, first of all, we need to look at our last inclusion in this list, number 7 of 7, and I'm pretty sure he is the most famous one. You will all know him. You you might just not know that he's East German. I'm gonna give you a hint, he is the only player on this list that is still active. Got it? It is no less than the one and only Toni Kroos. Yep, Toni is actually an East German. Born in 1990, just a few months before the two Germanys reunified, Toni Kroos was born in the communist East Germany and not in the unified Germany that we have today. He started off his professional career at the age of 17 in 2007 and of course is still playing today. His East German youth team is Hansa Rostock just like Joachim Streich. He then went to Bayern and after a short loan spell at Leverkusen he really got his breakout season and he started becoming a world class player at Bayern. Then after the World Cup 2014 they somehow gave 
gave him away for peanuts to Real Madrid and he has been one of the best central midfielders in the world for years. Do I even have to talk a lot about Toni? You all know him. He's won all possible titles. He's the only German to win four Champions League titles. He's the only German to win the Champions League with two different teams. And he is renowned for his infamous vision, passing, set-piece ability, dictating the tempo of the play. He's just a class maestro. At only 31, he has already amassed over 100 caps for the German national team and his biggest success there came obviously in 2014 when he lifted the World Cup. By the way, he's also the only East German player in history to ever win the World Cup. Matthias Sammer did not win the World Cup 1990 because that happened a few months before reunification. Very unlucky, but congratulations Toni Kroos. Well, after hearing all of this, you know how good Toni Kroos has been and still is. I think it is fair to say that he might be the best East German footballer we have ever had. Although the decision is surely not an easy one because all seven players in this list have been legends of the beautiful game. Well, now you know my top 7 best East German players of all time. I'm actually pretty sure that many of you already knew at least 3 and maybe even 4 or more of these guys. But most likely you didn't know that they all come from this little red part of the map and they all have a somehow weird accent. Jokes aside, I think this is actually a super interesting topic. East German football does never seem to get a lot of credit because most people simply don't know that there were two Germanys in the past. Now you guys who have watched this video know better, you are very lucky and you can tell me who is your favorite East German player of all time. I am really hyped to see your comments and maybe some of you will also bring up players who aren't even on this list. Also, let me know what you want me to talk about next. I'm really enjoying shedding a light on underrated topics in the world of football and I'm really enjoying this journey with you guys. So I'm seeing you guys in the next video and this is the time to say Fiago is out. Peace.